if someone chose weekend to Coachella over our wedding, I would be pissed. Be Clip pissed. it. That's it. That's <laughs> right there. <laughs> Let's go home. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. Welcome back to Wild Till 9 2.0 with new branding rolling out in today's episode. Right now? Yes. In you this lucky episode. Sons of viewers. Sons of viewers. Daughters of viewers. Do sons and daughters of viewers. That's, I thought we did it last week. Is it this week? It's this week. We missed it last week. Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> How exciting. It's we like the time travel thing because oh. right now it's before, but it's after. It's after, but it's after, yeah. and it's before, and it's before, and it's after. What a yeah. day! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, well, one. We have so much to talk about. We have so much to talk about. Um, because today we went for our first and last day of wedding venue touring. But wait, hang on. I feel like we didn't give enough like breath to the new intro and the new branding. Well, it's, there's no. Yeah, I haven't. I, have we? Have I seen the new intro yet? What do you mean? Oh yeah, no! Yeah, yeah, I saw. I saw. I saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's been so many iterations. I know, I know, I know. But it is very cute. It's much more, I feel like, us. It's, it's so it's our aesthetic. It's the our aesthetic. It's cute. It's so cute. It just like is a great combination of just like the phase of life that we're in right now. Which like is? very like bride and groom to be. Okay. No one really says groom to be. Groom to be. You really don't get like the love the way that the bride to be does. No. And Not doing groom to be things. I'm glad that you pointed that out. I've got yeah. a 35 minute segment. I'd like just to just, just get for into. the groom to bees. Yeah. No, no one needs that. Just as for the boys. Just. Um, I can't even get through it. Can't even get through it. Um, but boy it's representation, groom uh, visibility. I can't participate in this. The new intro <laughs> is so cute. I love it. It's also got some like personality stuff, and I'm a big fan. The pups, us. Engagement stuff. And, and the best Easter part is that there. like Jesse took the photos and they're not photos taken on self timer at home during COVID with our shitty iPhones. Arguably those things are the most like highest value photos we've ever taken. A hundred percent. Those were business starting photos. We got our money's worth. We really did. Yeah. I'm so glad that we spent zero dollars on that. I just wanted that like most podcasts don't even make it through a season, let alone a rebrand. That's true. Look at us, define Look all the odds. Us. Look at us, two and a half years, rolling up on three years until we did our first free brand. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, kind of. Someone asked me how long we've been doing this for and I was like, uh, maybe like two years. And then I was like, wait, hang on. Wait, no, hang on. Going on we're, no, we're, we're going on three years, yeah. right? Yes. What the shit? Yeah. And no signs of stopping. How do we still have Bigger than ever, talk about. hotter than ever, more exciting than ever. <laughs> how do we, what are we still talking about? What are we talking about? I. I haven't, I haven't known in, in years. This also was our first solo episode in a few weeks, which is exciting. I feel like I just like missed the cozy vibes. We've had some great guests. You playing out on the same couch? I would literally love hands. nothing more than to sit on the same couch too. Just, that's all I want. That's all I want. Do people know that we call them Pete's? Yeah, we do. It's, I think, I think we've talked about it before. A paw plus a feet is a Pete. Yeah. Hold Pete's. Is it still holding Pete's when we hold them? Yes, because all of the feet in our house are Pete's. Got it. Okay. Got it. Sorry, sidetrack. Um, yep, rather impressive. I'm impressed with us. I'm happy. Yeah, it's I gone by so fast, like alarmingly fast that this is episode 137. Nailed it. Did I? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. look at me go. But then you like you see podcasts that are like episode 1034, you're like, oh God. Yeah, that's fucked. But also like, that's some fucked. people do like every other day or every day pods and stuff, it's different. Not that's, to an hour and a half long no, yeah. deep dives into the internet's favorites or less than favorites. Yeah. I wouldn't say that we're the favorites. I'm saying our guests might be the favorites. Are the favorites, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know if I'm fully on board with where this is going. Oh, but us as the favorites? Yes. That's quite the nickname I would assign myself. Right, That's yeah. that would be bold. That would be no. a bold, uh, bold task. But I still enjoy it. Yeah, so are I'm, you kidding me? It's great. Also the quality, it makes me so happy just seeing like where the quality has come from, from episode one to well, episode 137. Actually, that makes me depressed, but yes. I do a little bit want to die when I look at the old episodes. It's the same way that like when I look back at like videos from 2013 that I made that I'm like, don't love those being on the internet forever. You could kind of take them down. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. I feel like with hour and a half long clips, it'd be difficult for somebody to go and like really Fully. download all of these and That's just true. keep them somewhere. That's true. But I, I mean, whatever. Anyways. 
Uh, so today we went touring on wedding venues. So the plan- Well, first off, let us know what you think of the, the rebrand. Oh yeah, let us know. Unless please. it's negative and then don't let us know at and all. And then don't actually let us know your opinion whatsoever <laughs> unless it's nice. But we'd love some positive reinforcement. <laughs> so feel free to say nice things and only nice things. Yeah. Um, today the plan was to go see three wedding venues and then we had a fourth tour scheduled on Wednesday. I have spent so many hours sifting through every single venue option in all of Southern California. Um, so I think that I did a lot of the um, necessary homework in order to do the most efficient touring so we didn't waste time. Right, because unlike regular the cities, like getting around LA, I feel like, it is a ass. like big time three venues took the day oh, we got, the, we got the back whole at, day and, and we got back at four which yeah. i thought was a gift right 100 percent. after leaving at 9 30. right like it was it was a day and we saw three venues and they were all relatively close to each other couldn't have been better mapping <laughs> and so the fourth one that we were supposed to go see on wednesday was an hour and a half in a different direction so that was scheduled for a whole separate day um no need because somehow by the grace of God and Lauren's due diligence, the very first one we went to is getting a hold. This is the venue that I also, at the very beginning of my venue research was like, holy. By the way, how long is this journey? Um, we got engaged in December. So December, so December the day after. 19th, hmm, mm. so six months. <laughs> We're gonna get to the 17th, right? Or 19th? Huh? 19th? What day we get engaged? I thought it was the 18th. Maybe, maybe it might be. It was, an even, it was an even number for sure. Okay. I know that for sure, because I, I feel better about even numbers. And That's I remember why, being like- That is why oh, I did it on so the 18th, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I would say probably in January, I started perusing. And then I feel like as soon as you start looking, your For You page and your Explore page on right. Instagram are just like full of different venue options. Just like mine's full of capybaras. Just, oh my God, Jeremy's on capybara talk and it is my favorite thing in the entire I'm world. I'm on capybara talk. And in Love case you're wondering, them. the capybara is the largest rodent in the world. They are. And Lauren's in, like obsessed, which if and you if look you're at- wondering if I did a full school project in grade three on the capybaras before capybaras were trendy like they are now, right. you would be correct. And I don't think anyone is surprised. I would argue that <laughs> our choice in dogs is and, your, quite reflective. and your choice of rodent yeah. aren't completely in opposite directions. Oh, no, no. We have two capybaras in our house. Yeah. 100%. I will say though, the capybara won me over when I saw that they somehow can survive in like lion's dens yep. with alligators, yep. hippo. Like some They're of, like the most loved mammal. Like they well, just- Well, like they just seem to, one, they don't seem to give a fuck. They vibe with everyone. It's like the original honey badger. But also on top of that, every other animal- Uh-huh, vibes with them. That seemingly could kill them. Yep. Isn't interested. Anyway, big fan that Jeremy's a fan of capybaras. I just am a fan of them. I just am perplexed by them. You have appreciation. You have capybara appreciation. I send them- And I'm so glad that you have joined the rest of the internet in capybara appreciation. I don't know if I've necessarily joined the internet with it as much as like I get served a ton of them. Yeah. I send them quite often. The right. amount of times that I have I have almost just like un, un, unbeknownst to like my thumb, like sent that to somebody that's not that's you. Not me. <laughs> Justine was the one the other day and I was like this close. I was like, send and I was like, oh. I'm sure that Justine would so appreciate I mean, there's capybara. Some people I would like, I would say, I would unsend that to. That's Justine, I would so I would rude. say this this wasn't necessarily for you. But I hope you enjoy this But today. now that it's in your inbox, yeah. I won't be taking it yeah. out. Yeah, I feel like what really sold you was the song. Capybara, 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 capybara. You're a couple months late on it, but that's okay. We're just happy you're here. Thank you. We toured three venues today. It was incredible. It was so much fun. And so like, I there there are so many incredible venues across Southern California. Like, I feel like we're really lucky in the sense that like, anything that's outside for the most part is going to be fucking pretty. Like that we just, we are just so lucky. Well said, Lauren, well said. Outside equals- Fucking pretty. Fucking pretty. P-R-I-T-T-Y. Uh, um, pretty. Pretty ricky. Um, I am- really impressed with how efficient this whole thing has been so far. You are welcome. I have, I mean, I, I've gone on more venue tours for a wedding I didn't even have mm-hmm. than the one that we went to right off the bat mm-hmm. and we should have just gone home. But I'm glad we didn't because it kind of solidified it. Like seeing no, we ones- we needed one, we, I needed yeah. a vlog. Well, yeah, vlog. I don't really care as much about that. Okay. But for everything else, <laughs> uh, like seeing things that like we didn't like mm-hmm. helped it solidify 
the ones we did. And even on top yes. of that, seeing ones that we knew could work are like, oh, we could, we like, this could, ha- this could yep. be an option, right? but this one's better mm-hmm. was so helpful. Oh my God. It was so amazing. It was like seeing ugly rings on your hand. Yeah. You, made, you need to see the ugly ones. You do. You do. And, and we didn't see anything that was super ugly. We didn't, we saw some stuff that was not as favorable, yeah. but I would say that I did a pretty good job of choosing you venues. Yeah, that, that made sense for our budget and kind of the aesthetic and the vibe we're going for. That all made sense in an area that was logical. Yep. And it went so well. I don't know if I would have known this had I not done this before, but the thing that I think people at least that are similar to me wouldn't know unless they went through this process is mm-hmm. when you pick a venue, you're not just picking the place you're getting married, you're picking all of the requirements oh my God, yeah. that go along with it. Totally. Can you explain that? Cause- Yeah, so a lot of the venues have um, exclusive vendors that you have to use. And for the most part, the ones that we have- Such as? Such as like, so catering, yep. um, bar, security, valet, valet uh, sometimes even planners. Yep. I know Calamigos Ranch in Malibu, um, they have a certain list of planners that they have to work with. Wow. Um, which makes sense. Like, especially someplace like Calamigos Ranch where they just like pump out weddings, the wedding factory. Yeah. Like you wanna have people who are competent and not that there are people that are not on that list who are not as competent. No, if you're not on that list, you're not competent. Next but question, it next, makes next topic. makes sense that like, they would wanna work with people who have experience working on that venue um, because it's a factory, a yeah. stunning factory. Yeah. Stunning, stunning, stunning factory. Yeah. We love staying there. Um, but we actually didn't tour that place for a wedding just because there are always so many weddings yeah. happening and they're all kind of in close proximity. Um, so the very first one that we toured was Hummingbird Nest Ranch. Okay, and call it right this out there. This is the one that I, one of the first venues that I found when I started doing my research and I was like, this is the gold standard. Like this is the bar, this is this is the dream. And I heard from so many different people that like this one always gets crazy booked out and it's just like insane because it is so stunning. And because it's a massive property that has so many different areas, I wasn't fully, I didn't fully understand how things were laid out because there were so many different areas. And so going to tour it, I feel like also like helps you understand the flow yeah. of just like how guests move through different spaces. Um, because I feel like too, before I even started going to weddings, it's like you do the ceremony. Um, and so there kind of needs to be an area that people kind of like loiter in before the ceremony starts and you get seated. You do the ceremony after the ceremony finishes, they usually like usher you into a cocktail, like loitering hour hour before like while they set up for the reception and then you move into another area or sometimes like you move move back into the original area and they'll restage it well like whether whether there's there's multiple areas or not it's the you get there Mm -hmm. and what do you do between when you arrive and the actual ceremony itself and then post ceremony but pre-reception pre-reception and then reception and then reception which is where dinner happens which is where dancing happens and like the table settings and choosing where people sit and stuff that's where i take your garter off i don't want to do that lauren i don't know if there's anything that could be more of a non-starter for me why i'll need why do you want to do that it looks fun it does not look fun that looks that looks awful what do you mean? It looks absolutely awful. I've been working on my technique for years, waiting for this. On who? You. On who? In my dreams, with you. Hmm. In my dreams, hmm. taking your garter off is mm-hmm. pretty much half the reason why I want to get married. Mm-hmm. It looks fun. It looks awful. Doing that in the uh, like within twenty feet of your mother makes me want to die. You're all you're doing is just sitting there with your head in between my legs. I hadn't thought about that part. That sounds awful. Well, what other parts of joy do you want to cut out? That's it, just that one. Just that? No, can't. We cannot not get married in a church for your mother. And then also on top of that, you put your head in between my legs. Donna understands the tradition. I'm not entirely sure if it was point A or point B that you're referring to (laughs) with tradition, but regardless, we, this will be a continued discussion in this case is not closed. I just want to be very clear. Sure. Uh, I, anyway, so the point is like going with all these like desirable venues as mm-hmm. well, 
they all have their very specific caterers and the very mm-hmm. specific things. And like mm-hmm. so, most of the things I feel like we're kind of flexible Even on. rentals. Right. Even like your right. tables and chairs and glasses and fucking napkins, like all of it. A and lot of times gets dictated by, unless like you're renting a place that just like is a blank canvas field. Like uh, sometimes you even have to bring in a kitchen build out. Right. Like so much goes into it. And the venue is the first thing you, what? Is there a kitchen there? I forget. We Maggie actually reminded me that I have to ask about the kitchen build out situation because <gasps> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so we have to build a kitchen. <laughs> to build the a linens kitchen. will never do. Some places These even utensils. have to rent bathrooms. <sighs> anyway, this one's got bathrooms. This one's got bathrooms, thank God. It's got a polo field. A polo field? It's got- We're not gonna be polo. Mountains. Mountains. It's got a helipad. Not doing it. When, oh my God, the guy that was giving us a tour Let's of not a hummingbird no, nostril. No, yet. we're not going to do that. He was like, he was like, oh yeah, you can drop in um, on a helicopter on um, this area, this area, this area, this area. And then he was like, yeah, we probably see it about once a month. And I was like, oh, I thought, I thought, literally thought that he was going to say in. once a year. Actually, remember when Lady Gaga like um, jumped into the Super Bowl on, during the halftime show? Yes. She didn't really do that, but she pretended like she did. Sure. That's going to be me. That's what you want to do? Yeah. Are there any other candidates for the day that I can rent? Besides me? Yes. Uh, Between the garter and the helicopter, I'm rethinking the entire thing. There's a worse helicopter <laughs> that I could do. That's true. Yep. That's See? true. That one, your mother would just perish. If your mother saw you helicopter your she wiener, would just, she would she, fucking perish. She would walk out of the room and yeah. just pretend it never happened. Oh, that would be awful. Yeah. Awful, awful. But yeah, he said once a month, someone helicopters into their their own wedding. I'm shocked it's not more often. I thought he was gonna say once a year. That is so extra and obnoxious. What do you mean? That's so obnoxious. Don't get married once. Hopefully. I, what do you mean hopefully? What? What do you mean hopefully? I mean, hopefully for everyone. What? Okay. I hope that Seemed people like there was only a little get bit married. Of- <laughs> Jeremy, if you helicopter your wiener at our wedding, would there- t- Would you rather me helicopter my wiener or helicopter myself? But those both mean the same thing. What do you mean? <laughs> I guess one we is- We are moving on. We are moving on. We are moving on. Anyway, long story short, the very, 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 very first venue we went to. Mm. And it was also hard to tell That's if what we're going with. I was giddy because we were just like so excited to be venue shopping or if I was giddy because it was just breathtakingly stunning. It was both, but I mean, it was mostly yeah. because it was uh, it was just like insane. It's like wrought iron gates. Yeah, but the every other the, the other two venues we went to today, like mm. they didn't have just like the wow factor. Like, well, they didn't have the wow factor, but they also like there was just things that throughout it. Whether it's like the way that the flow works or mm. uh, the way that uh, this brick look, it's stupid stuff. But it's like when you when you see one, you're like, holy shit! If we're able to do this place, yeah, I I can't imagine doing it anywhere else. And it's so clear and obvious. It's like a feeling that's so- Everyone always says that like, you'll when you know, you know. Right. Same thing with people say that with wedding dresses and I have yet to experience, I've only tried on one. So like, I don't know, but they're gonna be like, oh, when you know, you know. And so like, that was the moment. And Marnie said that afterwards when yeah. our, our wedding planner, we were texting and she was like, so we, we canceled, long story short, we canceled the fourth tour on Wednesday because she was like, I know that you're not gonna like that one as much as like a, the look on your face of you guys at Hummingbird Nest Ranch. She's like, I know that it won't, it won't compare. I mean, I, I walked around venue two and venue three, just going, no, yeah, no, 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 not yeah, Hummingbird, not, not Hummingbird, not Hummingbird. I know, I know, I, I know. wish we were getting paid to, to do this Hummingbird thing. Well, so I'm gonna reach out and see if they're open to doing some collab stuff. After so. we've already talked about them on the internet? I know, I okay, know, great. after, oh, oh, so also there will be, by the time this episode goes up, um, you can go watch the vlog that'll have all the visuals, obviously of all the tours. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but let's do some pros and cons of each one, just okay. so we can try let's and, and we can throw some photos up to try and make this as visual as possible, but let's go watch it. the vlog. It's got the whole tour. Um, so Hummingbird's Nest Ranch, or let's do the pros. Sorry, what? It's Hummingbird's Nest Ranch. Okay, one more time. <laughs> hummingbird, we're gonna call her Hummingbird. Yeah. Okay, Not hummy. so the pros. So Hummingbird, um, one of the first pros that we didn't realize is actually gonna be as much of a pro as it ended up being by the end of the day is that we love the location of it, yeah. like proximity to just like things that are important to us. Also like the majority of people that are coming yeah. will be from the Los An- the greater Los Angeles area. Right. And it is in the greater Los Angeles area. Right. It is like, uh, like a, a freckle away from LA County. Mm-hmm. And so thinking about the proximity and location versus the venue that was an hour and a half to two hours away, which was the one that we're not ending up which is the one that we're not going to, thinking about the other line items that you have to think about when you are technically out of town. Did you just say line items? Yeah, line items. Okay, nerd. I, have you, I mean, I feel like actually the answer is no, but the spreadsheet that our planner has put together for us, yeah, it's I, literal I've line items. i spreadsheet, yeah. 
Um, but it's like shuttle buses from all of the major hotels that were doing hotel My friends can at. walk. My friends can fucking walk. They can Not walk. Not to that location they, they can. They can call an Uber. They could Uber. Yeah. They could Uber. But like, then you're thinking about shuttle buses. You're thinking about, okay, what hotel do we want to stay at? What hotel are we putting our parents at? Like in hotel blocks. And like, okay, if we want the dogs to be a part of it, which we definitely do, like yeah. what do we have to then do an Airbnb that's dog friendly? If, it adds just like cut, so many more layers. I'm just saying, if we have to cut you or the dogs, it's me. You're I go. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously. You're cut. Obviously, you're I go. I'll let you know how it goes. Right. I'll send I go. you some pictures. So the proximity for Hummingbird was something that later on we realized was such a major, 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 major pro. I think also too touring the going from ceremony area, which had the most stunning view of just like mountains. I was looking through a lot of their photos and like a lot of times they don't even have any kind of floral installation or like thing behind them because the view is so spectacular. It's a, an immaculate fucking mountain. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you just get like built into core, which is so nice. So yeah. that was 10 out of 10. And it was like the perfect size as well too. Some of the other locations at a hummingbird nest ranch are for parties of like 300. And like that would make our wedding feel like dinky and awkward. And this was like the perfect amount of space for like our amount of people, which is yeah. going to be, I think around like 90 or so. Yeah. I think like realistically, we want to find a spot that feels like we've filled it up. Right. Not like, oh, we can have three more of these here. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's so awkward. Where is everybody? That's so awkward. Going to events like that where they've yeah. like gotten too big of a space, like thinking that it's going to be more. And it's, it's so awkward. It's yeah. awful. That's awful, like a awful, classic, awful. like a uh, corporate air. Like oh, yeah. When people like get a full ballroom. Yes, like, yes. Corporate uh, air. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you just know the event planner is being fired. You're like, oh, Oh, boy. yeah, this didn't. This is not what they were going for. Yeah. So ceremony space was 10 out of 10. And this is the other thing, too, is that like as we were touring the other locations, um, the other venues, sorry, it was like, okay, maybe the reception area is 10 out of 10, but the ceremony area later on is mm, 3 out of 10 or whatever. All three areas of Hummingbird were 10 out of 10. Oh, for ours. For ours. I, I was going to say, the, the, the other spots that they had wouldn't have done it for me. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. It was but very like, much like the, the, the very yeah. specific place. We're getting married mm -hmm. at this place. Mm -hmm. I say that as if it's already signed. I know, it's already signed. Like, <laughs> I feel pretty confident about it. But like, I, I mean, I've never felt that way about a venue before. It just was like so seamless to envision ourselves yes. there. The and only like, thing I was waiting on was price. Yeah. And then when I heard it, I great. We yeah. made that work. Well, and like the thing was, is that we already agreed to not tour some of the places that probably would have been stunning, but yeah. we're just like way out of the price range. Um, yeah, because I think the other side of this is because of the venues in LA, because they're very competitive and because there's a lot of people with a lot of, I don't know where everyone has their money from. No idea. It's mm -hmm. like everyone just walks around with just like briefcases of cash, just sitting around going, I can't wait to just spend this right now, immediately. In fact, you can hold it for a year and a half. I don't need it. Doesn't make any sense to me. But because catering is wrapped up in the venues mm. and you have to kind of pick either theirs or pay for theirs anyway and still bring something in, a lot of times the food minimums, minimums mm -hmm. to get started, mm -hmm. 40, 50, 60, 70 grand, like, easily into the hundreds all over the place. So it's like, you are really committing to some of these places. Even yeah. if you don't even have 200 people coming, they'll still have a minimum you have to hit. Oh my God, yeah, some of the venues are crazy That's where it's the like other side. you have a 150 person minimum that you have to pay for whether or not 150 people come. Yeah. So venues like that, they were off the list. We're not going to bother seeing them because we right. don't have 150 people. And I it's like, I don't have 150 you friends. could invite 150 acquaintances, but like nope. we don't want to. Nope. I don't want like, more is not more. No, 100% no, 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 no. Everyone always says that 100 is the magic number where you can say hi to everyone and it feels comfortable and that you're spending, so that you're not, so you're not, so you're not spending your entire night like making small talk well, and being like, hey, so good to see you. Everyone who has families that are our size and, and smaller, like I, I, there are some families I know where 100 people would be the immediate family to be in. Oh my God, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah oh my God, are you kidding? Right. So, yeah. But for us who have a Tiny dozen families. people between yes. the two of our families, yes. It's a lot easier to think of, okay, great. Who are the other 88 people going to be? Right, exactly. And then we're done. Yeah. And then we're done. So ceremony space, 10 out of 10. The cocktail space, same thing, 10 out of 10. There's already like built-in bar. The garden and fountains oh, no. are- 11 out of 10. 12 out of 10, 13 out of 10. No, no, no. That's a reception stunning. area. That's yeah. the reception area. The the cocktail hour area yeah. that you uh, kind of slide 10 10. into, fine. 10 out of 10, stunning. Yeah. And then the reception area, oh my fucking God. Lauren walked out and she looked at me with this look of like, I was oh. pissed. I was pissed. Oh my God. <laughs> Literally, uh. I walked out and I was like, fuck. Like I've never seen fuck. someone. <laughs> so happy, mad. Right. Yeah, I know. You would have thought that you were you were upset 
with- I was upset at how much I loved it. Right. Immediately upset at how much I loved yeah, like it. You literally, walked, literally the up. whole vlog is me just cursing. I was like, fuck, shit, fuck, God yeah. damn it, fuck, we're fucked. That was the whole vlog. That's at my me wife. At, at Hummingbird. That's there literally what it is. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Like a lady, uh -huh. like a lady. Yep. But I mean, it's just so stunning. So you come out of these incredible, like wrought iron, massive, like two story gates that swing open. And then it's a staircase that splits around a fountain. And like the entrance is just so grand. I mean, Nest Ranch, go look it up. Oh my God, we better. I, I hope that we're able to work with them in some capacity because the promo, oh, we are. We're the just promo, to do it. right. You're, you're just paying them. Yeah, we're going to work it. with them. We are as working in their, with them. They're a venue that we're going to be at. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the space is like this amazing round area with a fountain in the middle. And there's these like, um, these just like stunning market lights that are hung and you're surrounded just by like mountains. Well, there are no lights. We are going to hang the lights. We have to hang the lights, right? Yeah. You're right, you're right. Lights I'm thinking, I'm thinking of all the photos. I'm thinking of all the photos. Yeah, lights oh, no, not no. included. This place is like, a lot of the other places come with concrete like- Concrete and air. Yeah, concrete and air. We picked the one fountain. that- We picked the one that comes with And nothing. gardening, gardening, the florals, and the botanicals well, that are already there <laughs> that are already there are beautiful. And yeah, they're not gonna pick them up and take them away. No, 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 no. But they're not gonna bring anything special for us. No, that we have we'll to break. We have to break. We have to break. Just a small GDP worth of things. Um, I actually talked to someone today who knew someone who had a wedding there, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, you have to bring everything down to like the napkins, the trash bags. Like, you bring everything." Real quick, can me and the nine guys have a quick conversation, guys? Hey, so I don't know if you knew this, but there are. Um, choices when it comes to linens, chairs, tables, flatware, dinnerware, and all of the ones that you don't care about won't, it'll never do. These things cost money, more money, more, more, more money. And you would be flabbergasted at the amount that a fork costs to rent for the evening. I just want to throw that out there. And that's it. And we will be paying for nice forks. This is the, but by the way, first and last time you've cared about forks. Yeah, I know. But I love a dinky little stupid fork. Yeah, like you- But I know that other guests probably don't want to use a dinky like little I stupid finally, fork. Finally, 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 after being with you for what seems like three eternities, mm -hmm. I've finally gotten rid of the last Ikea fork in this house. That's not true. We kept two of them for the dog's food. Fine. <laughs> we have two more. But like, I love how this is the thing that you'll care about as far as flatware is concerned. Listen, if I could make everyone eat off of a small fork because I get to eat off a small fork, I might do it. I really might. I'd be wildly tempted because everything is better off of a small fork and that is just a fact. That is a fact. possibly your worst take to date. It's not no. a take, it's a fact. And so if we could do that for sure, but I know that that's probably not the preference all the way around. So it's fine and we will be paying for regular napkins. But listen- Could we just do like pull up an in and out truck? Probably not. No, it's probably, I don't think it's on the preferred, per Per, proverbial. I don't think that's on the uh, preferred. Proverbial catering. Okay. I don't think that's on the preferred vendor list. Okay. Unfortunately. Should we have a conversation with them about that? I, I would love in and out. Um, okay. So reception area is absolutely stunning. It is immaculate. It is everything and more. And it is, it did not disappoint based on the photos that I had seen going into it. Way and it, it's just even better. Uh, no, I, looked the, I looked at the Instagram tonight and I was like, this is not as great as it is in person. No, it doesn't yeah. even do it justice. Yeah, 100%. Even with like having the full setup, because obviously there's nothing in the space. We went to a tour today and it was just beautiful. Yeah. Um, other pros and cons. Um, one of the ones that ended up really, really mattering and making a big, I think, like decision making uh, difference was that the cutoff time at Hummingbird was midnight, whereas our second well, it's favorite two a.m. for Friday, Saturday, right? Midnight other days on yeah on other days, yeah. and then it was ten p.m. at our other favorite, which is like. To do, I, I know this sounds crazy, but five and a half hours, just so you have your ceremony starting at 4.30. And right. if you're shut down by 10 to do a but ceremony. Also, I don't want to do a ceremony at 4.30. I, I don't want to do a ceremony at 4.30 either. No, you're getting roasted. Eight. You're getting absolutely roasted. Right. Um, to do a ceremony, a cocktail hour, dinner with multiple courses, speeches, dancing, and dessert. To do Carter all of off. that in, yeah. in five and a half hours. Helicopter reveal and take away. I suddenly magic mic interlude. Ooh, I'm back in. Yeah, I'm back in. I'm Mike. I'm back. Oh, well, let's just go ahead and take that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
it it like those two hours make such a huge difference. And I huge. think with like a price increase, like that makes sense. Even if they were to charge to be like, hey, like for the option to go two hours longer, do you want to pay this? We would for sure say yes. I want the option. Yeah. So the I, price. I like options. Like, well, so we, yeah, we do have the option. We're doing it. And whether we end at 10 or midnight, it'll cost the same. Right. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to use the perspective that it's an option, then that's great. Yeah. That's great. The other ones is not an option. It's not an option. Yeah. No, I just, the vibe in general, mm. and this sounds maybe really simple and obvious, but going through a venue that you really like, all you can think about, all you can think about, to, at least in my perspective, is like, you can see how it would work. You 100%. can see the day, the flow. You can see, it gets very easy to visualize. The places I didn't like, I kept making concessions in my head for like how this would work. Right. How I thought the would same way. Make this how work. you could make this yes. work. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the second place, um, which honestly the price difference is not crazy. No. Like it definitely is the next step up at Hummingbird, but like it's not enough where we, I think feel like we would want to make concessions for no. the discount. And like the ceremony area was just not anything special. It was beautiful. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It was, fine. It was nice. It was fine. It was, it was nice. It was okay. If we, if that last bit, if like we really were, were coming up on that ceiling of the budget, yeah, we could make it work. Totally. It'd be great. It was totally, totally. But the the value that we're getting out of that difference is just huge. And at the end of the day, that one didn't didn't make me didn't make me sparkle. It didn't make me sparkle. Didn't make me feel like this didn't is make the me one. Sparkle at all. Yeah. My sparkle actually died. It didn't die. It, did die. it died a little bit in third one, place. The yeah, last it died one, a little bit in third place. Yeah, and we might have had the worst <laughs> tour guide. I felt so bad for him. He was nice. I mean, can you like just imagine like you work at a place that does yeah. a lot of weddings and like you're not the tour guide and the person that does the tours is not there mm -hmm. and somebody wants a tour yeah. and you're like, yeah, so like show us around. And you're like, oh, this, well, this, well, this is, is uh, um, well, these are bathrooms. Kind of new things. And then this, not sure how this works, but. I know people use it. The good news is that even a really good tour guide wouldn't have changed our minds. So they didn't lose out on any business. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think to myself if like my job was to sell that place as a venue. I don't yeah. know if I could have gotten you to, I think I could have lied my way to it. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, sure. I'm sure you could lie. Yeah. So anyway, second place, the pros were that it was really pretty. Um, but I think the biggest cons were that um, one, and this is something I feel like you don't think about, is like where the sun positioning is when you're having an outdoor wedding. We would have been blasted directly in the sun because you have to start at 4:30 because you have the shutdown at 10 p.m. We would have been directly in the sun, and our guests would be would have the sun on their backs, which is. I guess more ideal than having the sun in your eyes as a guest. But then if we were to look out at our like friends and family, not only would we most likely just have sweat dripping down our faces. And right. if you're in like a full suit, you're probably dying. Right. And you're just like it, being blasted in the sun. Like that's just not ideal for photos. That's not ideal for just like being comfortable. And we looked at the package to move the sun. It just didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. Yeah. It didn't make sense. We, saw, we, we, we considered, we, mm -hmm. went, we went through it. It's just mm -hmm. the numbers didn't add up. So ceremony was like a three out of 10. Uh, cocktail hour spot was cute. It was like a seven out of 10. Reception area, I would say was like an eight out of 10. It was cute. Yeah. It was cute. It was yeah. quaint. It was cozy. It was like, a lot of the a lot of these places I think are able to create like a really pretty like serene space that is um, like protected and enclosed and feels cozy and quaint. But like the breathtaking views of being elevated at yeah. Hummingbird were just like unmatched. I mean, go look at any of the photos there I and know. just look at the uh, like all of the things that are like you can't. I guess you can buy them. They're not like somebody you could bring in for the day, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what you do to bring in for the day. Like the 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 scene that it's sat in. Oh, right, 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 right. You can't buy mountains. Right. You can't buy a sunset well, on a mountain. You can't buy the view of that mountain yeah. from that perspective. Yes, from that elevation, yeah. from that. It's yeah. just like, and I'm, I'm sure there's- plenty You know what? I'm honestly surprised that Hummingbird is not like more expensive, truly. Like based- Shut <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, but just like based on the price estimates that we got from some of the other, like, yeah. I would say competing <sighs> venues in terms of like niceness, I'm shocked. Well, just wait until we see I what that very napkin clear budget that looks this like. Is not, this is not, in my opinion, affordable whatsoever. I want to be very clear. Well, it's affordable. We can afford it. We can, af we can uh, afford it. Yeah. yeah, we can afford Palpable. it. But it's, it's not like, ooh, a discount. It's not like, ooh, a deal. Right. Like it's not a deal by no. any means. But some of the other ones that I think are less nice, but are 
two times the price were just crazy. Uh, yeah. The Say wedding some names. industry is crazy fucking expensive. Well, I also think it's very easy to get caught, away, caught up in the things that you think matter, but, but don't. You know what matters is a, a, a decent bathroom. So Cielo Farms is one of the ones that we immediately took. What, what? Fucking say it with your chest, babe, say Cielo it. Cielo Farms doesn't have nice bathrooms and it's fucking expensive. Porta potties. Porto potties. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds for, of thousands of dollars, minimum. Like you could easily spend $250,000 at a wedding at Cielo Farms. You know what though? What? I'm thinking about it. That one fucking, um, the one planner and Cielo Farms, mm -hmm. they should just team up. They, they should, should call they deserve them, each other. They should call themselves Shitty fucking um, uh, shitty fucking planners and even more outrageously <laughs> expensive places for you to waste money on your special day. <laughs> Jeremy's heated. LLC. <laughs> Jeremy's heated. <laughs> um, bathrooms, important. And I feel strongly about that. And I would love to have a bathroom that flushes and has uh, like ventilation. <laughs> that is not just a grate in the ceiling of a plastic porta potty <laughs> wall. You've lost touch with, you're not relatable anymore. Look at you wanting ventilation in your bathroom. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm fucking. A bougie queen. Yeah. <laughs> no, bougie, I am. Um, bougie queen. Like, but like at the, at the core, the crux That's of the situation a priority. here, like yeah. everyone's going to use the bathroom at least once throughout the evening. Once. At, at least once. At least once, yeah, 100%. You know, you'll be in there six times. I know. An hour. I know. Yeah. I know. You could the nervous poops for your wedding. Probably. Wow. Looking to level up your freshness game from head to toe, the usual go-to deodorant isn't cutting it, right? The fact is, it's not just our underarms that need a little attention. We'll say hello to Lumi whole body deodorant designed for underarms, those sensitive areas and beyond. Lumi wasn't cooked up in some lab by a bunch of dudes in white coats. It's the brainchild of an OBGYN who was ready to break down those outdated assumptions about feminine freshness. She took on the task of proving it's not our lady parts causing, <laughs> yes, that's our lady parts, <laughs> causing these occasional less than fresh moments. Her clinical research led to Lumi, a pH balanced deodorant that's designed to work with our bodies, not against them. Once again, it's our bodies. Lumi is aluminum, baking soda, and paraben free. Plus it has the superpower to fight off odors for up to 72 hours. And that's not just a claim, it's clinically tested. On Jeremy's lady parts. That's that's right. <laughs> Clinically tested. That's right. When I got my Lumi deodorant for my 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 lady body, I was skeptical because of the lack of aluminum. I feel like that is like the, what I used to think was the magic ingredient to not smelling. I, I don't know why, but yeah, I, I think so too. I thought so too. And I've tried other aluminum free products and it, you can immediately tell that it's just not working. It, you can immediately tell. But Lumi has been truly amazing. They really aren't kidding when they say 72 hours odor free. I have now been converted to a full-time Lumi user and I'm not looking back. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code WILD at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit Lumi deodorant and use code WILD. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. We're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get the piece that you've always wanted and leave it up to the meticulous eye of an eBay authenticator to make sure that the watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Wait, fuck! What? Now who's vulgar? Now who's not a lady? <sighs> Forgive me, ladies. Uh, we have like less than a year to get in shape. Yeah, I know. So that was the other thing is that because Hummingbird is in an area where it gets a little toasty roasty, um, <laughs> like more toasty roasty than toasty, other roasty? areas of LA. Okay. 
we, I asked the point, I was like, do you suggest moving the wedding up? Yeah, would you suggest doing this like next week? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we okay. should. Okay, sick. So I got fucking months to get six fucking abs. Uh, even four, I think would be fine. Four abs? Yeah. If you get a two pack, you'll be fucking thrilled. Out of me or you? Me. <laughs> me. You don't need abs. <laughs> I would love abs. You want abs? I love abs. You have abs right now. I don't have abs right now. No. And then because we live in fucking LA and all of our friends live in LA, I literally had to Google when Coachella weekend one of 2024 is so that the wedding wasn't the same weekend of Coachella weekend one. <laughs> because I- <laughs> Because that is the life that we live in for like, our friends. I think that we're pretty special, but I don't think we're as special as- some people view Coachella as. 100%. Also, if someone was Especially like, oh, one. but like, I think I might get a brand deal. Mm. I'm so sorry. Uh, honestly, might be a decent way to whittle that desk, like the guest list down to like 80. That's actually maybe not. Maybe 70. Yeah. 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 Especially if you did like weekend two, think about it. If someone chose weekend two Coachella over our wedding, I would be pissed. Be pissed. Clip it. <laughs> That's it. That's right there. <laughs> Listen, I understand we're not week one material. I get it. But week two, that's a fit. And don't even get me started on stage, coach. Oh, my, I, I, that'd be the end of the friendship. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's Why don't you head to the, the, the county fair on your way back? Then, yeah, and over, when you're, over when, our you're when you're busy, right? Wedding dress shopping starts now. Whatever, though. It's like, yes, agreed, totally. But it's plenty of time. No, we're not behind. No, we're not behind at all. Yeah. But I feel like in my mind, I was just like, oh, we still have so much more time for this to like, you know, percolate, percolate. And now it's like, oh, fucking schedule starts now. To do yeah. list is now. Yeah. I love it. But I, I think it's good to keep things moving. And like my ADD brain needs deadlines. If, because if there's no deadline. Oh yeah, I love it. I, it. It doesn't get done. This is like not stressing me out. Like this is very fun for me. I love it. There's, it's like so exciting. I like planning and I also like not having to be the main person planning. Like getting to just like be hands on with the planning process, but not having to like, I don't have to carry all the heavy lifting right. on my back. It's like, really nice. We're not, I'm not expecting this is you, ideal. nor is anyone expecting you yeah. to come up with like a framework totally. that like is make or break. 100%. All you have to do is just like be there. Yeah. Yeah. But also I can do more if I want to. Right. Which is great. But but don't do more than you need no, to. No, I know. I do need, yeah. need to. Yeah. I do need to. But I am going to go dress shopping ASAP. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I can't wait for all three of my looks. That's going to be great for you. Yeah. It's going to be great. Um, and then the third venue, we really, really, really did not love. Um, there were just like some weird permanent things that you weren't allowed to change that were like big eyesores. So for example, there was an I'll pop a photo on screen, but the ceremony space was like- a <laughs> I'll pop a, fo a photo on screen. So in case you're wondering, uh, we hate this place. <laughs> Like just out no, there. No, no, it was nice, but like it, it was just like there was this really, really big. It just wasn't for us. Maybe it's for someone else. It just it we didn't like it. It did feel like someone took the the outer shell of a barn off of, well, the barn and left like the structural elements, painted it uh, school yellow. bus yellow, yeah, and then said people will love getting married. Here. I wasn't even at that part yet. I was at the ceremony still. That oh, was the reception with space with the dirty fucking drapes. Yeah, it was so weird because it was such a pretty space. Like they had this great like lawn that was obviously set up to have this like main stage that had like really nice like landscaping around it. It really was like a beautiful space. You know, but how they had this this giant really thick, cumbersome, like billow. No, no, sorry. It's not billowy. That was like the problem. It was like this really thick white draping above it as sunshades, yeah. which are great, but it wasn't sheer whatsoever. And so it was just like heavy and a really, really big eyesore. And yeah. it was a permanent fixture. Like really long, big bath towels. Right, when you're drying your laundry, that's exactly right. what it, it looked, looked like. It looked like drying laundry. Yeah, it did look, it like looked someone, exactly like, a, like a heavy sheets. bath towel. Yeah. Yeah, no, not even a bed sheet, because a bed sheet would be more sheer, you're like right. billowy, because like, right. that could be nice. And like in places where you're outdoors and it's really sunny, like that's essential, but like this was just not. It was like they took three straight dudes and were like, hey guys, you got 20 minutes. To make this shady. I want you to just like say things out loud. Yeah. And then whatever, that's, that's gonna be the decor for mm. everyone's wedding. And if they want right. to take it down, it's They'll really, really expensive. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then you move into the reception space and um, they have, yeah. So basically it's like the structure, the the pillars of a structure the, or whatever, which is really cool. Like a lot of people do that and it's amazing. You can string lights from it and chandeliers and florals. Well, you can't though. 
And then this one, not only was it bright, bright yellow, which is such an odd choice decor wise, like you would think that it would just be so much more successful as like a default color. It, all did, it also did look pretty like structurally sound. For oh them God, to be like, totally. no, 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 you can't hang flowers off this. No, no, they're like, you can't put florals on it. You can't put draping really on well, guy, it. Oh, I mean, you could put draping on and it. And the world's worst tour guide, very nice man, by the way, was like, yeah, we just don't want anybody scratching the yellow steel. It's like, what? what? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I won't scratch it. Yeah. So anyways, we saw that one and that one was, um, that that was also, I think an example of a space that was a little bit too big for our guest cap. I, I, the last thing I think that was a problem was space. They could have made that thing half the size. I still would have thought it was equally as not the thing. Yeah. You know, right. It didn't make me want to get married there. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And not I know that sounds all. like very simple and basic, but yeah. I, there wasn't any part of it. Like when we got there, I thought it was, can we leave? Like I, I wanted to not take the tour. Right, right. I mean, I think it's hard too when there are elements that are not changeable, not yeah. movable and- Well, yes and no. The things that are not movable about the place we loved, we're obsessed are, are, with. Right, 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 no, totally. But that's what I mean, that's what I'm just saying is like the venue is just not for us. For someone right. else who's having like a really bright, colorful, like wedding that's got lots of vibrant colors, like having yellow structure might be super perfect for them. But yep. like for us and like, although there will be color, like having that base structure that you cannot change, just be stuck yellow yeah. for us was not the move. Yeah, the rustic school bus yellow festival yeah, wedding. Yeah, very odd decision. Yeah. Odd choice, odd choice. choice. Um, and All then, three of the places that we went to were former residences. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. That is right. Thank you. That is correct. Fun fact. <laughs> Fun fact. Yeah. Fun fact. And whoever built them had some money. <laughs> Truly any, like, had some money. The fact that money. any one of these places was like somebody's house at one point. It's crazy. Just absolutely insane. Wild. I love that for them though. I hope they're still thriving. Um, so those were, that's the that's the venue recap tour. And I think we're done. I think we're gonna put a soft hold on a date. Done. And that's it. You're all invited. I like, I wish we were going to more just for like the ability to see more. But I also like, for example, I would love to see if that other one was in within 45 minutes of yeah. LA, then I would love to go see it just to go, you know, two hours another one. Is but two hours, like that's too much. There and back. When it's not realistic. Pass. No. Yeah, no, no, it's just not. Not for not us. Realistic. Babe, we know what we're doing. I'm we're getting murdered. So excited. We're getting murdered. I screamed all the way home. All Audibly. Way home. Yeah. Audibly. No, it was an exaggeration. I screamed all the way home. You did? It was I was giddy. But it was worth it. It was so fun. I mean, I thought for sure we would like battle between a couple. Yeah. Probably have to go see a couple more. Right. This is great. My homework doing before this was excellent. I want to give myself a pat on the back. I'll give you a pat on the back as well. You Thank you it. so much. You nailed it. Thank you. So you did. Much. And I support it. <laughs> We're physically, mentally, and emotionally there. Yeah. And I'm actually excited. Yeah. Like, I, I think your choice is spot on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Couldn't agree with you mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have yet to disagree about the wedding so far. Well, the garter, the helicopter. Yeah, we haven't passed. We, listen, that, that bridge is yet to come. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so venue touring was super successful, and I'm so excited. And we have to start like making some like real decisions after that, too. Those are like. But that's the hardest one. That, that, okay, that's what everyone has been saying. Like, oh, finding it a is. good planner Trust that you me. like and it finding is. the venue is the hardest thing because then they kind of make the decisions for you in terms of like caterers and stuff like that because you don't have that many to choose from. Right. Many from which to choose, but it's fine. <laughs> so it's done. <laughs> it's done. It's done. It's mostly done. Well, haven't, done. Said, haven't sent a check yet. Yeah, so. right. Haven't sent a check yet. By, but, by but done, we mean- it, it In our minds, it's done. Yeah. Like, in our minds. But there's all, the fact that there's even multiple days. And I'm like, this is the last one we have to like get this one day. If we don't get this one day, like we're fine. Oh yeah, yeah, we're yeah, good. yeah. Flexible as fuck on we're dates good. too. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We're getting married, we're getting married. Getting married. Is that the getting married song? It's getting married song. Okay. Um. So we, because we haven't done a solo episode in so long, the Wild Till Nine hotline just like stays open as always. If you have a, um. I was gonna say urgent question, but we haven't done it in like a month or so. If you have so an urgent question, maybe- probably, maybe, maybe don't. Maybe email somebody else. Yeah, don't email. But if you have a lingering question that you'd like an answer to potentially eventually. That we can answer. Potentially eventually is actually a great way to say it. Potentially eventually, exactly. Yeah. The Wild to Nine hotline stays open. Yeah. Um, so please submit your audio only or video with audio only yep. messages to send the Wild to Nine hotline. We don't will send have, nudes. don't send nudes. Don't send oh my nudes. God, Jeremy, Jesus Christ. Don't send nudes. Well, you said that I was like, oh my God, do no. not send nudes. Send please. nudes to, to Lauren's DMs though. No, please. No, please. Yeah. The micro penis guy just stopped. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a nude that please. you are looking for some feedback on, send it to Lauren please right no. now. Please no. She'll love that. Please no. <laughs> please don't send me nudes. Um, Whether they're, they're your, uh, your own or not. Wild Till Nine Hotline is open and we are taking calls today. Wild Till Nine.
<laughs> uh, let's do it. All right, we've got our first Wild Till 9 hotline caller. Hi, Lauren and fiance Jeremy. Hi. Um, okay, my Wild Till 9 hotline question kind of starts with a story. So I love a story. Um, my ex-boyfriend and I dated for about six months. I was super committed to the relationship. Long story short, he ended up breaking up with me over text. Um, basically trash. Saying he didn't like me anymore. And that was trash. the reason that we were broken up. Um, obviously, I was very heartbroken over the situation. I had a lot of good cries about it. And I'm since doing better. I know that I deserve better. Um, yeah. Anyway, here's where I need your advice. Oh, boy. So this summer, um, we will both be spending a week at this camp. Of course you will. Oh, no. camp that we volunteer at. Of course at. you will. Oh, no. And that Nostalgia. is incidentally where we met yeah. last year, one yeah. year ago. I can feel it. Um, and then obviously started dating from that. Uh, I've seen him a couple times since we've broken up, but not talked to him, not really interacted with him at all. Um, my question is, what is your advice for someone who has to spend such a long period of time with someone who hurt them so deeply while still being the bigger person. Um, any thoughts you have on the situation would be great. We act unbothered and thriving no matter how bothered okay, we, you let, are. Let's, let's run it back. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get a synopsis here. We go in hot and no, unbothered. No, okay, okay. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Dated six months. We are going to date the hottest guy at the camp and make him look like a loser. We're not going to do that. That would be bothered and unthriving. That would be bothered mm -hmm. and bothered and biased. That would be bothered and making emotional decisions. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So six months relationship. Yeah. It's been a year since they met. Mm -hmm. This is a nostalgia type opportunity. Mm -hmm. A lot of memories. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a place where you go. Mm -hmm. Sights, sounds, scents, mm -hmm. everything kind of mm -hmm. just like reminds you of mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. And they're also there. That's horrible. I'm so sorry. I like literally, I'm so sorry that he's there potentially ruining any of the vibes. Even if it's just like, like even just having to think about him being there and ruining your vibes and energy is so annoying. I'm so fucking pissed at him for that. I cannot wait for you. I'm thrilled for you. I'm excited for you because- okay, yeah. We already ended this with a self-realization moment. Mm -hmm. She knows she deserves better. That's true. She knows that she has the capability of of thinking about how do I how do I how do I be the bigger person? Remember that's the last thing she said. Yeah. She ended with saying that she wants to be like that's her goal. So I'm thrilled that she has the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to prove that. And then do what? Well, uh, the, the, I mean, the fuck, key thing is this: the hotter guy. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you. Uh, pilot that should one. Should I sit this one out? I think maybe you should. Um, <laughs> no, I just think that the problem, uh -huh. the, the, the temptation will be that there's very few stronger things to overcome than nostalgia based emotions. Oh, a hundred percent. Also like if he tries to get into his feels and is like, oh, this is where we fell in love and tries to come crawling back, you kick him in the nuts. Even worse than crawling back though, more difficult is he's not crawling back. He's almost, uh, if he's being mature mm -hmm. and almost- uh, Like apologizes. Almost, not even apologize, but yeah, maybe sure about it, but almost like surfacing how much they've both grown and saying things that aren't untrue, like saying things that are reasonable. Ooh, I'm mad. That will be the difficult part. I'm mad, I'm mad, but I'm mad, I'm mad. as long as mm -hmm. you're walking into this situation, both when you're with him actively or both when you're around people that know that there's some, you know, some mm -hmm. tea going on, and your only goal is to do things that you're going to be proud of later on, you're fine. Ugh, I hate how much her and right this answer is. No, but just like, don't be the person who does the thing yeah. that, that wins the battle and loses the war. And most importantly, loses the thing you actually want to win out on, mm -hmm. which is like be a better person. I'm just person. like such a sensitive individual that like, if this were me in this situation, I know that as soon as that person was in the room, it would it would make my, it would make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and like give me the, 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 totally. the, the my spidey senses would tingle. You know what I mean? And so like, yeah. I, I hate thinking that even just like his presence is going to affect her. Even if you have to like fake it till you make it, and make it so that it, you don't seem like it changes anything in your demeanor, like as as he also has to navigate being in a shared space. 
Like, just don't let him ruin your time. Like, that's like, ugh. But that's key though. I'm mad. But like, if the thing you want to prove to yourself is that you- What can, if I give him food poisoning on day one? Yeah, just go drop, um, go grab some, uh, uh, what are those little we eye drops? We just find a sketchy little- no, 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 eye drops, put that in the oh, water bottle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get them. Let's don't take do him that. out. Don't do that. You can get very sick. Um, uh, I would really suggest doing exactly what you know you should already be doing. Like, like you already yeah, know what she's, she's supposed already, to be doing. She already knows she's mature. But, but the key thing is, I don't know if there's alcohol at this camp. I don't know what the, you mm -hmm. know, we never know. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I think it's a youth camp. Oh, but sometimes I feel yeah. like the counselors and stuff afterwards, yeah, I get a little crazy. Like how band Remember camp Remember how they met? Yeah. How, what, the, what the fuck do you know about band camp? Yeah, but no, I'm just saying that band camp like, like poses to be all wholesome and shit, but then you think you're like, oh, band camp. I can't remember a time. Um, but yeah, I think that you already have the tools. Mm -hmm. You just need to, and also, Surround yourself with people that will support your decision in making yourself a bigger person. Yeah. That's key. That's true. And also don't be afraid to say that up front. I think you have to, I think you almost have to like find a core group of people who you can be honest with about that, like that's gonna be your journey for the week mm -hmm. versus like trying to do this all by yourself. But also I think like be careful in, in talking any kind of shit with someone that it might I didn't get say back. Talk shit. No, I'm saying that. <sighs> Lauren. What? No, I'm saying I'm saying be careful if you're gonna talk any is shit. Is this the Wild Tonight hotline or the Wild Tonight petty hotline? Both. Okay. Both. This is, you're getting, you're Lines are open. Petty. You're extra Lines petty are open. I'm just thinking about how I would feel in this scenario and what would feel tempting to me. And it would be that I would want to talk shit to people to put a sour taste in other people's mouths about this guy to get them on my side is what I'm saying. That's not the way to get them on your no, side. No, no, I know, no, 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 I know, I know, I know. But that's what that's what petty me would want to do. Right, well, I mean, pe so, petty all of us, by the way. Right, exactly. So I'm just, I'm just acknowledging that that is natural to feel that way. Right. By the way, if day four, you feel like you want to fuck, you know, do your thing with him. Only if you want to though. Right. Right. <laughs> Double right. But I just think that like, she already knows what she wants. Oh, I'm literally mad at just his presence at that camp. It makes me so mad. I'm, I'm so excited she has the opportunity to prove what she wants to be able to prove to herself. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <sighs> You, why are you so frustrated with, with things that you feel good about today? <laughs> it's a great, beautiful, more amazing day. Next, mm -hmm. thank you for calling in. Hey, Lauren and Jeremy. Um, I'm such a big fan. I love your old podcast. It's so good. And I watch it literally every week. Yes, every time I'm in the car, like this is on. I just love it so much. And Lauren, I've been watching you for so long since I was like 13, 14, yeah. and I'm turning 20 this year. So yeah, yeah. long time. And I have some tea to share, so I hope you guys are ready. So I'm a college student. I'm gonna keep this anonymous just because, you got it. Um, yeah, but <laughs> there is this guy that I was talking to and you know, things were progressing. Then we went our separate ways for like winter break and we didn't really talk that much because we live Ooh. in different areas about five or six hours away, but okay. we still kept in touch a little bit. And then when we come back to school, I find out that one of my friends had slept with the guy that I was no. talking to after she broke up with her long-term, long-distance boyfriend literally the day after, like, wasted no time. And I was like, wow, okay, unbelievable. And then <laughs> the next week, I find out from one of his friends that he has slept with another girl. And I was like, okay, so two in two weeks, that's absolutely insane. And then the week later, I found out that he slept with another girl, and so in the span of like three weeks or something. He's been with three different girls and I'm just like trying to decide if I want to be petty or not because <laughs> I personally let's am not the biggest fan go. of the girls. And I know all of the girls dislike each other. So I'm like, mm, do I want to stir up some drama? Do I want to start some tea? Do I want to let them know? <laughs> so yeah, that's basically that. And I would just want to know y'all's thoughts. Thanks, love you guys. We, I love this so much. It's not even, cause she's obviously over it. She's like, yeah, fuck, fuck all those girls and fuck this guy. Like, I love that we're already at that point. I think but we're looking like, for very different things in this one than what? the last one. We're looking for, we have a very different oh, objective, no, no. a very oh, different this goal. One, this one was made for me. Let's go, let's go. Look at my little crab hands, let's go. Um, ooh, okay, thoughts. The girls already don't like each other. Um, hmm. Okay. So what's the common denominator here? One guy. One guy. Right. Four girls. Right. Three no girls. No cups. Yeah, yeah, Well, one listener and three girls. One listener and three yes. girls. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, go ahead. I mean, I think it depends on the relationship that you have with the other three girls. Sounds um, like not a very good one. One, they used to be good friends with. Well, one right? of them, one of them, one, okay, wait, hang on. Okay, actually, I'm, I'm rethinking this a little bit. I think that <laughs> I, would only stir up some shit between some of the other girls if one of them was 
like looking to actually date the dude and he was still being sketchy. Say more. Like, like I think right now to stir up some drama, unless like, unless they like piss you the fuck off and they do something to you and then you wanted to like stir up some drama. Like, I think that that could be maybe a little bit fun and petty, but like, just say one of the girls was gonna date the dude and then he was still being like a little sketchy while they were starting to see each other and date and you knew that he had already like fucked all these other people. Then like, maybe I would go to the girl and be like, hey, like just a heads up. Uh -huh. Like this dude be fucking, uh -huh. and just like just just you know keep a keep a guard up. I don't know. So I don't think that I can remember a single time where you illuminate as the ex illuminating or surfacing or suggesting mm -hmm. that you know something uh, compellingly negative about the person that you used to be with mm -hmm. and like what they're doing mm -hmm. has gone that has gone well for me ever. <laughs> I can't remember a single time. Like any point in time, you're like, by the way, I don't know if you know yeah, this about them. Yeah, but that's because you're the guy in the in this scenario. That's not fucking true. <laughs> uh, how about this way? Every time I've been on the other side of that okay. and Fair. Fair. got petty, Yeah, I've been, uh, I've gotten checked uh, by a decent level of reality that I should have known going into mm. because of the way that I went about it. And it, but being I guess right. that, that's more like that's more of a relationship thing. I think that we're just looking for like a little a little fun, a little fun and games, a little a little petty drama. I, Listen, I think that if you're trying to go viral on TikTok and you want to make some crazy shit happen and you need some 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 flavor, some spice in your life, I'm not against it. Listen, I'm not. A, I think you should do exactly what you want to do. If it doesn't if it doesn't blow up your own life in any way, that then fuck you. I think, yeah, that's Roll the key the thing. I also think that like, you gotta make sure that your house is in order, all right? Yeah, so like, right. you, you gotta tie up some tie up some loose ends yeah. if you need to. Right. Because the, the best offense is a great defense. Right, because you don't owe the guy anything. The only thing, the only person you owe anything to is yourself. Right, just protect yourself, make sure that you're, and then and then if, if all your if all your ducks are in a row and you feel like added some spice to your life. Yeah, I think, but also like, do it, the, the, the best revenge is, start thriving, just, you know, be- But we're not even trying to get revenge on anyone because we're not mad at anyone. Well, I mean- It's more like, do we want to stir drama between the girls that already don't like each other? Yeah, but also like, I also think that there's a level of, uh, allow this to not be- To just play out. Well, like- a You know what? You know what? Maybe this feels like the best thing to just do is, this feels like a bestie group chat type of thing where you can all freak out about it, but then it doesn't really go outside of the group chat. I, also, if I like, I would want, if I was really upset about this, but I didn't want people to know I was upset about this and I'm not really upset about it, but like it, 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 it annoys me, mm -hmm. right? I would want those girls to, to know that I knew, but mm. like, I'm not bothered by it, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it would be stronger, I feel like, if they found out, or especially if the friend, like it, and your response to them was just like, it, that's so wildly mm -hmm. like offensive to me, but at the same time, like I'm, like, I'm not gonna do anything about it. Besides the fact, like I just don't have any interest in just, you know, speaking to you again, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's like a, a level of just like uh, strength when you're not being too outwardly petty and like you can kind of show how strong you are. I hate when you have to be not petty. No, listen, I I, a little it. petty is not bad, but don't, yeah. but don't bring yourself down. Totally, no, I agree, I you agree. Know? I agree. Like, do if you're if you're going to stir up some drama, do it in a way that you're going to be proud of. Yeah, I guess. Like, like, yeah. By like by like being <laughs> to consistent. To look back on and be like, yeah, I did that the right yeah, way. Yeah, nailed that. Yeah. Versus like, oh, but I maybe it's just maybe it's just some tea for the group chat. Do it this way. Only do something that you are comfortable doing sober. That's don't. A, that's a good point. Don't send the drunk text or start this after a drink or two. That's true. Bad idea. Bad idea. Yeah, I feel I feel confident about that. Okay. Next caller, please. is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ever stop to consider how much time you spend on yourself in a given week? How about the time spent on others? The scale often tips heavily towards the latter, doesn't it? I need the category of like how much time was spent on the pups, honestly. I'm constantly thinking about what other people need from me at work, at home, in my social life, and um, definitely 100% caring more about the dog's needs than my own, which is, which is how it should be. Don't get me wrong, that's how it should be. It's very easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of life, meeting 
everyone else's needs, ticking off tasks from that never ending to do list that we really pause to think, what do I need? And before you know it, you're feeling stretched thin, burned out, running on fumes. It's a familiar story for too many of us. But guess what? It doesn't have to be that way. Therapy is a game changer. It can provide you with tools to find that often elusive balance in your life so you can continue supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Therapy has shown me that I can't be at my best if I'm always putting myself last. Prioritizing your needs and focusing on your growth should always take precedence. Therapy is a great way to help you see this and start putting it into practice. Take a moment for you. Invest in your well-being because when you're at your best, you can give your best. Let therapy guide you to that balanced life you deserve. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash WT9. and fiance Jeremy. Hey. Um, just wanted to say you guys are amazing and have really helped me through some tough times. Um, sorry, Jeremy, this probably won't be very interesting for you, but I value both of your advice. That's it, right. Um, <laughs> I, need to see, I need to see a reliable psychologist that I trust, which is not helped by my severe abandonment issues. But recently I moved to a new city and therefore had to change psychologists. My new one is lovely and really understanding of my trauma background. But of the, lo- of the last 10 sessions, she's cancelled seven. <gasps> and we've only had 15 total. So I know that's less than half that she's cancelled, so I shouldn't complain. Mm-hmm. And she cancels due to chronic illness, so it's not her fault. Mm-hmm. It's just that... I really need consistency. I really need a safe space to decompress each week with Mm -hmm. someone I can trust that will be there. What do you think I should do? Do I stick it out and just hope she doesn't have any more flares and doesn't doesn't cancel much more? Or do I change therapists? However, just the thought of telling her that I'm changing absolutely terrifies me, as well as having to trust a whole new person. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, thank you. Oh my God, that breaks my heart. Oh my God. Um, a couple things. One, when you are seeking help in any kind of therapy, mental health space like that, even like a physical space, like even if, and I feel like sometimes people like might think it's more important for physical, but it is just as important for mental, if not more in so many scenarios. But right. it's like, just say, just say you broke your wrist and you had to go do physical therapy once a week for your wrist to properly heal. Like, I feel like people would, you know, so immediately be like, oh, like my wrist is not gonna heal properly if I don't go to physical therapy. Like I need to find someone who's consistent. And I feel like it's just as important and crucial to have that for your mental health as well too, because like, it, because giving to because because giving yourself to someone mentally especially in such a vulnerable state is something that is so it's just so sacred and you need to be able to have consistency when you're doing that and i think a big part of like the mental stability that comes with therapy like one of the main benefits is the mental stability that you are hoping to find being able to have that safe conversation have that safe space if the stability is not there in 50% of it. That's crazy, that's crazy. And maybe this needs to be the reality check of someone that is totally unbiased to be like, having half your sessions canceled is insane. And it is absolutely like, there's no world where she is allowed to be surprised, the therapist. Well, I wouldn't say there's no world where she's not allowed to be surprised. Sure, sure, sure. Her feelings are valid. She's allowed to be, she's allowed to feel what she wants to feel. But like, I think even if someone were to cancel 25% of my sessions, I would seriously be considering trying to find someone who I could count on for consistency. At the end of the day, you are starting to sound like you are more concerned or worried. Right, for her well-being. About your therapist's Mm -hmm. well-being or what she's going to think. Yeah. Then you are being able to even be, even if you were in a place that you were, not consistent with yourself and you were still in this phase of trying to figure out what you even felt. The problem is it sounds like you you actually have a pretty good grasp on like 
uh, all the things that you're not comfortable with? I mean, it's it. I, I totally understand too. Cause like starting with a new therapist and like starting over quote unquote is always so like repetitive. And sometimes it can be traumatic to relive any kind right. of trauma that you have to re-explain to someone new so that they can understand your background, which is a key part yeah, of- but Right now we're adding trauma by having to explain to somebody why you, you can't count on them anymore. And oh my God, not, no, totally. That's not Your productive. job is yeah. not to worry or about wonder their about scheduling and whether their or not health. your yeah. mental health professional is going to be able to be- uh, open right. to whatever the fuck comes out of your mouth. Yeah. That's not your job. And I, I totally understand like how difficult it can be to reopen wounds, having to re-explain things like that part is, can just be so painful. And like, I totally understand not wanting to switch, but I think, I think the uphill battle of having to do that again versus not having someone that you can count on, I think will be so much more worth it in the end is finding someone that it will be consistent with you. I couldn't get to the, the accent sounded Australian. So- Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm trying to like, realistically, the, the, the best case scenario in my mind is finding another option mm -hmm. without leaving the first one right. entirely and to the point where you're ready to, to move on and not have to have like a gap or a delta between the one you currently have and something else. I think also way, too, because like it's a client patient relationship. You technically don't have to give her a reason for why, like obviously it would be very nice and I'm sure that she would appreciate that if you were to insurance you might have provide. To. I mean, yeah, it depends if you're on insurance, I guess. Yeah. But um, I think that like, even if you're just saying, hi, I'm, I've, I'm moving on to a new, you know, I'm transitioning to a new therapist. Thank you so much for all your time. Like, I don't even think it needs to be any deeper than that um, in terms no. of like, you don't owe them any emotional uh, reasoning for your decision. No, you, in this one, you get to be as selfish uh, as you need to be. I feel so bad that she feels so bad about feeling bad about the therapist. But, but, to, but to, to my point, like that's the thing that stuck out to me. It was like, you're, you're, yeah. you're starting to, to take care of other people's feelings right. in a, a vertical that you're supposed to be as selfish as you need to be. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It is, but, but. I uh, hope she finds someone. She will. Yeah, she will. She will. She Thanks for calling. Oh, next caller, please. I hope you find someone. She will. Hey, Lauren and Jeremy. So <laughs> here we go. I guess, uh, well, from the title, I'm, I'm my own cock block. Oh. <laughs> so backstory here is me, a 22 year old female and my fiance, a 22 year old male. Oh, we got together four years ago. Life was great. I got pregnant. I miscarried. Oh. And then my sex drive went in the dumpster, in the graveyard, in the oh. deepest, darkest hole that is yeah. on this fucking planet. <laughs> um, and I don't want it to be. So that's what makes it um, frustrating. A little bit annoying <laughs> is that I wish I had a higher sex drive but it's obviously frustrating my fiance who does have his, you know, 22 year old sex drive still. And he's been super, super patient with me about it. And it's, I've been to the doctor and of course they give you the runaround and I've been to multiple doctors that give me the runaround of, oh, it's common and there's not a lot we can do about it. Go get your labs done, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's gotten nowhere in the last two years. Like it's to the point where we have sex maybe once a week or once every other week. And a lot of times it's just because I feel bad. Because yeah. I mm. don't want it any other time. So I'm like, well, I might as well just do it now. Get it over with, get my weekly duty over with. Mm. But I also understand that it's normal for couples to have sex like three to four times a week. So um, it's nothing to do with him or our relationship because I love him and it has nothing to do with the miscarriage because that was three fucking years ago and I'm over that and I just, I don't know. I don't know why I, I don't, I, fuck. I'm a mess. I guess that's all, bye. <laughs> I love her. Oh my God. Okay. Well, one, I think that like right off the bat, like that's awful about the miscarriage. And I think also too, from an advice standpoint, that's not something that we've ever experienced and can speak from a firsthand like account of. Um, 
because I, I don't know. I've been in relationships where my sex drive has waned. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. that portion of it I can relate to, but I'm just saying like the, the other portion of it, like that's so traumatic and I can't even imagine how that can tie into it. So I'm just saying that I can't speak from a place of like oh, relating to that because of the miscarriage. Right. right. Exactly. I don't know. If, I mean, you say you got over it, which great for you if you have, I don't, I don't know how anyone does. Yeah. I, I, I truly don't know. I yeah. think it's probably not something that you ever get over and it's something that you just becomes, you know, part of life, part of right. Yeah. What you've been through. That'd be one of the things where, I mean, great. If you have, that's amazing. I just wouldn't, ex I wouldn't expect anyone mm -hmm. to have that figured out totally within really any amount of time. Right. But I think, um, I, I think first also that we personally don't really, I can't think of a single couple in our, that <laughs> I don't know anyone that has sex three to four times a week when they're in a long-term relationship. Uh, a couple. Can you? Yeah. I can't think of many. No, not many. <laughs> I really can't think of but many. But at 22. But uh, you know what? At 22, maybe. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you're right. At yeah. 22, different. things are different. It's yeah, different. you're right. It's different. Yeah. But also, I, you know, couples just have different needs and different levels of sex yeah. drives. But I like, it, it just... I don't know. I think between medications and just like different lifestyles and also any kind of like traumatic history, like it's so fucking hard sometimes. Well, I think also the moment it becomes a thing. As it's, soon as it becomes a thing, the pressure that yeah. goes on around it, like the way that she feels like she just feels like she needs to like fulfill her duty. Right. Oh my God, fuck. Like that sucks so much. And even just like, even if you felt like that, if you had the, a tiniest, teeniest little ounce of feeling like that, yeah. it becomes so much, it, it just like bubbles up. You know what I mean? Feeling like the pressure that you have to be having more sex. I don't care what it is, whether it's sex or anything that mm. I've once enjoyed or sometimes enjoy. If at any point in time, I feel like I have to do it, I don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. It's like, it's the yeah. total opposite. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's like, it, it's, 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 it snowballs right. very quickly. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, I wonder what the communication has been like around this, like if she's carrying the feeling of this feeling like a burden on her, because it would be hard would, to talk about it, but it'd be no, hard to not talk about how, it. How, how could she not? What do you mean? How could she not like carry that burden and like want to talk about it, but not want to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, I wonder if she's like, if she's had that conversation with him. I mean, it sounds like, She's, whether they've had the conversation or not, he's yeah. understanding of there being something there. Yeah. She calls that out. Right. But also I think it's almost even worse sometimes when the guy's like, I totally understand it. It's like, I get it. And it's right. like- And that's probably why, because most girls would probably be like, yeah, go fuck yourself. We will just not have sex thing if I don't feel like it. But she's like, I feel like I should be doing my do. Oh my God, that's awful. And well, and all, but also like, there's, there's a little bit of like, yeah, the word duty is just- it. is, I know tough. though that was just like- and, oh. and by the way, it's not like, I get why you're using that word. I do. I understand because I would feel the same way if like I just never wanted to have sex, but you did. And I wanted to make you happy. I'm like, well, I guess I'll- Here we go. Here it is every yeah. fortnight. Yeah, yeah. Let her happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was I was expecting when you said that like you have no sex drive and you'd, you'd never have sex. I was expecting you to say you have sex once a month. I was going to say once a year. I, I thought that was coming for so for like- Okay, they're 22 years old. I know, I know. 22 is- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but sometimes, you know, like like that, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Everyone's so different. Yeah, but like I- I also think that the, there's no one in the world besides uh, you uh, are going to be able to figure this out, sadly. Mm -hmm. And like, to your point, it's not like, it's not like, and especially for women too, it's like for like guys, there's things that will uh, somewhat help women. I wouldn't begin to uh, offer up any stupid piece of advice out of my mouth, except for the fact that I do think that there's a superpower in- Vibrators? Sure. But also <laughs> like accepting <laughs> that, accepting that there's, things to try you have like that you have not tried that are outside your right. comfort zone yeah. and that like you want to try and do it with your partner yeah. versus like try and find it on your own and then bring it it's almost like you have to explore that together mm -hmm. versus like two people that are kind of on their own Navigate wavelength their own sexual, yeah, you gotta be like yeah, yeah, dolphins yeah, to get together. yeah that's what i was gonna say i was gonna say maybe like it's it's setting time to not even be necessarily sexually intimate but even just intimate in other ways um like might be more fulfilling and Listen, like- Get a chapter or two through a uh, classic insert smutty- Smutty um, book? Smutty God book damn. here. Yeah, yes. And let me know if you don't kind of want to have sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but it's true. Like I, like, I wonder if there's just things like maybe even masturbating more. Cause also if you masturbate more when you like if you were to masturbate when you don't really feel like it and you made it feel like homework, that feels like less of like- Yeah, I don't think you should try and do the things you've already done. I think you should assume that the like- Things, that they're, it's not working. Yeah, you- It's you, not working. I think you need to try things you think you won't like mm -hmm. and you're either right mm -hmm. or that wasn't as 
weird as I thought it was going to be. Right, but even it, maybe it's even like more conversations about like whatever her love language is, like finding more ways to focus on what her love language is for her that she wants to receive love necessarily. Or even just exploring the, uh, the ways other people, like- mm -hmm. uh, Like just trying new things. Trying new things, but also like, as opposed to like go and reading the world's most uh, secretive Bloodiest. 10 kinks out there. It's yeah. like trying to find stories, movies, content, ways to entertain yourself mm -hmm. that uh, present the way that other people enjoy. Right. And it might not work, but, but also- maybe it might. might. Yeah, you're right. Just like trying an array of new things, whether- but Trying to entertain yourself, not trying to like, I want to I want to try and figure out how to make myself horny versus like, to me, that's homework versus agree, like, agree, agree, I want to entertain myself in a way that there's uh, people who are enjoying things that- yeah are enjoying things that I wish that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And until almost like you're, it's like presented. Cause I just don't think you can go from like, I'm not enjoying this to like, okay, I'm gonna have sex. I'm gonna like it this time. If if that works, amazing. But, but there I, needs to be a ton of middle ground. Yes. Research. Like you you need to- Make it re make it research and not homework. Well, also like make it an adventure. Yeah. Make it a challenge, make it fun. Don't mm -hmm. make it like, I must complete this task. Right. It's like, I'm trying to entertain myself. Cause even if you were to try something new and like not even saying like, try, don't try like a new sexual position. I'm not even saying like that. No. Just like try something new and like. Best case know. scenario, you turn yourself on to it something that you didn't think was possible to turn you on as. Or I was gonna say worst case scenario is that you can crack a joke out of it. And it's like, you're like, that's not for us. Got it. So we're not furries. Yes, now we got know. Got it. Sick. That's not for us. <laughs> yeah. But also like, I think the most important is finding a way to include your partner. For sure. And versus, make it a together thing. Versus trying to make this something that you feel bad about. Like a solo journey that she's trying to fix. if it's not successful. Uh -huh. And it's like, I'm a failure. It didn't work. And he can't find out about it. Right. That's the worst case scenario. Right. right, you, right like right, right. fail together. Yes. Yes. Fail together. Yes. Fail together. And it'd be kind of fun maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're turned on by failing. You don't know? That would be quite convenient. Fail kink? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh I would my have God. nailed high school. Yeah. Next. I want to be very clear. Also, we are not, also, we are not experts in this I am whatsoever. My, I am my own cock block is hilarious. That was fucking hilarious. But also the way that she went from that to saying that she had a miscarriage, it was like, it was you like, know, comedy oh, sometimes. we are, we are. Yeah, comedy is <laughs> healing traumas. I like you and I am glad <sighs> that you found our podcast. Next caller. <laughs> Hi, Well to None Hotline. How What's exciting to be calling in. Oh my God. First of all, Lauren, Jeremy, I adore you both. I absolutely love the podcast and the vlogs and just seeing how much you guys have grown over the past couple of years. And also I'm obsessed with Moose and Diggy. Yeah. Okay, now that that's done, I have um, a question for you guys today that involves um, some friendship drama, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. So let me give you a little bit of backstory. I have these two friends. I'm going to call one of them Mary and the other one, Joseph, Darla. Got it. Darla. Don't know why. Darla. So Here Mary and Darla. I met both of them a couple of years back when we were working together at a job and we got super close because we were, you know, trauma bonding, 25, living in LA, doing the LA thing um, and building our careers and also just going out and partying and having fun. That's so what I became really close with the two of them and they were particularly close with each other because they, had a lot of the same interest, that kind of jam. So the two of them became super, super good friends and were hanging out all the time. I forgot what felt like two years straight. Um, my current dilemma is that they have really drifted apart. Ooh. And um, it was more on Mary's side. Mary began to feel like the relationship, they were spending so much time together that it had become kind of toxic and codependent. And she kept leaving hanging out with Darla and not feeling super great about herself or mm -hmm. the friendship. And so she decided to start putting some distance between them, but she never really communicated this with Fuck. Darla. And so Darla has been, you know, really confused as to what happened and why she feels like she's been iced out. And, you know, that kind of feeling of just being really confused and frustrated as to why this friendship changed when it doesn't seem like anything big happened. Um, my current problem is that neither of them are talking to each other, but oh. they are both venting to me. Oh. I'm still close with both of them. I hang out with both of them on a very regular basis, talk to both of them every day, and they both have vented to me at different occasions about the situation of their friendship. Now, I'm really trying to stay out of it because it's not my battle to fight, um, but I definitely am trying to figure out how to do that and be the most supportive of both of their feelings 
without kind of like betraying the confidence of the other because they both are asking questions Mm -hmm. that technically I have the answer to, but it doesn't feel like my place to share those answers. Um, So that's the situation I'm currently in and kind of wondering what the best way to navigate that is. Do you guys have any advice about what to do when like your two close friends are no longer close with each other, but you still talk to the other one. And also I have a birthday coming up soon and I want to invite both of them obviously to this birthday. I'm a little bit nervous about that. So um, any, you know, kind of advice you have for navigating a weird friendship dynamic like that, I would really appreciate. And that's my question. And hopefully someday I'll see you guys around LA. All right. Thanks. First off, I thought we were getting invited to the birthday party and then that kind, of bombed, we're not. Kind, of, kind of a curveball around invited. That's fine. Fuck it's, that. I have been in this same situation multiple times and it's not fun anytime. And then it's never, it's never a good time. It's never a good time. And the worst part is that like, I think that she's doing everything right. Like right now, like understanding that even though she has the answers to all the questions on both sides, it's not her place to be the, the, the messenger for either of them like 100% stay so far out of like answering questions. I think in the past when I've been in this situation, I wish that I would have pushed both of the people to have conversations yeah. a little more than I, like I, I think in the past I probably encouraged both sides to be like, you guys should really, really like try and communicate about this. I should have pushed harder. I 100% should have pushed harder because I think it gets to the point where I, if I was in her position, I think that I would say to Mary and Darla, I love you guys both so much. I cannot continue to be like stuck in this middle island But if you say them. that, you're already alluding to the fact that you know more than they do and that you're now not telling them. I know, but like, it's like either you lie about not knowing or lie about knowing, like she's just stuck in an awful position in the middle. Totally, totally, yeah. But like you saying, uh, well, I don't, I, I don't want to be involved in this. Like you trying to wash your hands of it to somebody. Well, yeah, but well, like what's the middle ground there of being, of uh, like gently I'm encouraging them? I'm the, the, I think best and worst person, most most yeah. likely the worst person for this. Because I think so too. I don't struggle with this, mm-hmm. but also I don't struggle with it as an individual, but my approach is not always the right way for everybody else. Yeah. Because I would be the very first person to be like, I, have, have you had this exact conversation mm-hmm. with Darla or Mary. And, and not- sometimes, especially with girls, girls want to be heard. They don't want solutions. They don't want solutions at all. They don't want solutions in that moment a lot of times. Yeah. And so like, I think as a friend who I feel like I provide a lot of empathy and support, emotional, like on an emotional level for friends, like I can understand how it would, it's a really difficult balance to feel like you're supporting them as a good friend and listening to them and hearing them while also knowing all the answers to the questions that they are trying to like piece together answers to, while also wanting to be like, I need you to go have this conversation with this person before it jeopardizes all of our friendships all the way around. And it's it's an impossible situation. I think it's so touch and go and it's so delicate and it's very, very difficult. I think that the best possible scenario, and this is not always possible, the best possible scenario is for you to hedge a bet with one side or the other in the sense of like, who you think is the uh, more likely candidate mm-hmm. to open that conversation. Right. And find a way. And push there. Not push. Encourage. Uh, <laughs> Synonyms. <laughs> not, not even. Uh, <laughs> your job is to figure out how to, to position yourself as how would you go about helping that person open the conversation? So like it, it's a together thing with them to like open that conversation for the someone like who's not going to ever open it up. You think that I hang on, I don't understand. So like if uh use you Mary and Mary and Darla yeah. and call her. I would look at I would look at Mary and Darla and go, mm-hmm. which one of them is is more likely mm-hmm. to start this conversation okay. if it were to happen. Uh-huh. And then my my thought is how do I find a way to help them come to that realization that they have to start it? Encourage them. But but like essentially open up the floor of like, how do I open this? And not necessarily challenge them, but like, how, how do I let them know that I am interested in assisting them in them starting this conversation? Trying to sell. Not even sell. <laughs> sell the like, idea of bringing it up. But it's like, make sure that they know <laughs> that they're not alone in their yeah. little endeavor. Totally. But like, 
you have to pick a side of just like, hey, who's going to like more likely like start this conversation? Right, right. The, you, the problem is, is that if it continues to do like this, it will implode. Yeah, if you don't, and like, it'll implode in a stupid way. Yeah. Like it won't, it won't implode in like a way that like anyone's like, well, it's about the problem. It'll implode because like someone also has the same nail color. And it's like, right. did we, uh, we ended, exactly. We ended, and then it all implodes. And you'll know when you're explaining to why the friendship ended to somebody right, who's a non-biased right. third party. Right. And they're like, wait, so like, why didn't you just like change the fucking color? It's not about the nails. <laughs> <laughs> because they, she should have known. And it's like, oh, okay. But like, I, I do think that there's a world where you do have to like uh, make them come to the realization. That's that, what I'm saying. Like, I think like the only way. Yeah. yeah. Even if you told them, hey, this is exactly how this person feels. This is how this, you giving them the right answer uh -huh. is it's the wrong vehicle. No, totally. It well, because then that, that just continues more questions of them. And then you might end up as the mediator totally. in the same room. Because, yeah. And you don't want to be a mediator. No, hundred percent. No, no, no. Because I, there's a world too. And I feel like girls love the idea of potentially doing this and being like, I think the three of us should all sit down and have this conversation together. And this person can serve as the mediator. You would serve as the mediator. And like that also not a good idea. Mediator, facilitator, not translator, a good idea. Yes. messenger. No, no, no. no to all of it. No, 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 no. No, you need to uh, make the case to the person who's more likely to, I think, bring this up that yeah. the worst case scenario of them bringing it up is not not as bad uh, as if they don't 100%. bring it up. 100%. Use their fear against them. No, but, <laughs> but like truly like find, wow, great sound effect. Thank you so much. But, but finding a way to like- That's make the it, friendship imploding. But like make it very clear to them that like they have the tools to get this back on the right track versus like here Before are all the ways that late. it goes yes. long. Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. <sighs> Last and final color, please. A confession from a fellow Canadian girly. Let's go. I have fiance, Jeremy. So on this week's podcast, you were talking about how reverse cowgirl is <laughs> one of the most dangerous sex positions. Indeed. Well, I'm here to tell you that girl on top can also be dangerous. Oh. Um, about four years ago, I was having sex and was on top. And for context, I did not break anybody's peen. <laughs> but basically, the peen came out. And as he went to go put it back in, it pushed uh, just above where my vagina is and the friction and pressure caused me to get a tear that I had to go to the emergency room for. I had to get six stitches and no sexy time for four weeks. Oh God. Uh, I was quite traumatized to say the least, but my boyfriend was significantly less traumatized than me and I refused to do that position for a while after. And in the hospital ER room where like six people had to look at <laughs> my tear, they didn't completely numb me properly before <gasps> doing two of the stitches. And uh, to say that was painful is an understatement. Um, and my boyfriend watched the whole time. So safe to say one day when we have kids, he'll do just fine in the delivery room. Oh. Anyway, I just want to say thanks for giving us space to share. <laughs> and I love the pod. <laughs> That's my favorite. What a way to end. That was amazing. Just no questions, no comments, just sharing. Yeah, no questions, That's no comments. Favorite. Just wanted... feel free to send us all of your hotline submissions that are just fun to listen to. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, by the way, I just think that there's her poor coochie. Shout out to the guy for um for what for for what for um being in the room. <laughs> I was literally about to say, what in the fuck are you about to say? He did the right, he did the right thing. <laughs> he did the right thing. Yeah. His emotional support. And physically being there. And it is his fault. You know, I'm not good with sharp things. Oh, you would pass out. Yeah. You would immediately pass out. I could, I'll hold your hand and look the other way. You don't think you could watch my coochie get stitches? Do you, <laughs> do you want to like go out, give an answer for what you think I would say? <laughs> like when the Lauren picks sure up a butter knife, I'm, Screaming. I'm, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, it's yeah. not. I, yeah, I don't know how exactly they nailed that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to like figure out the friction of the, I don't think it's, I think it's, it's best yeah. to leave that one at the bed. I, I think so too. I think so too. But I'm glad to hear that, that, uh, they made it Four through Four weeks is actually not too bad. I thought it was going to be longer than that. Like, Way longer. Yeah, I thought it was going to be really stitches? long. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, I got a paper cup like six months ago and I still don't feel like my thumb's the same. Seriously. Yeah. Well, good for them for sticking through it. I wonder if she got a badass scar. I mean, if there is a scar, that's something that's like a like a badge of honor. Man, coochie tears. Not for me. No, thank you. I I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Different reasons or ways a woman can tear her vagina. Yeah, cooch cooch to anus. 
I don't feel like we need to dive any more okay. examples. <laughs> it's for another episode. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Uh, that was as non-enjoyable as that was for you. It was a great story to share. And for the mems. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, for the plot. Also, there's something about like a little bit of like trauma together as a couple. Yeah, that, that bonds brings you. you together. I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. And she's Canadian, so it would have been free stitches. Well, sounds like they could have maybe done a slightly Numbered better a job. Better. Yeah, yeah, it's for a little more. I mean, spray it. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. A little more. Throw a little more on there. On that note, um, I hope you enjoy the new end card. We will be back next week. I think just us next week, maybe. So you can look forward to another episode of Just Us and Coochie Tear Trauma. No Bye. more Coochie Tears, no more Coochie Tears. <laughs> Bye, Lavia. Uh,